cadets, my name is Agent Luke and this is Mission Academy. Well, you have arrived at your destination. This is it, the final week of your training. If you manage to achieve today's task, then you will have qualified as a secret agent. Cadets, we have tested you physically, mentally, emotionally, maybe even spiritually, putting you through your paces and only the best remain, and that means you. Well done, we're proud of you. Now here is gonna be our final mission. We've got the best of all, the final investigation for you to do. Here it is. It says, the mystery of the missing body. This sounds really dramatic. Right, Agent Penny Gwen, please give us everything we need to know so that we can solve this mystery. Thanks, Agent Luke. Well, if you've been following the news over the last few days, you can't possibly have missed the very high-profile execution of Jesus Christ on the cross. We discovered last week that he was the person that had been arrested and put on trial by the religious leaders. They didn't like the fact that he was claiming to be the Son of God, and they persuaded the Romans to put him to death on a cross. Well, now, now events have taken a dramatic turn because the body of Jesus has gone missing. Eyewitnesses say they saw the body of Jesus being taken down from the cross and buried in a tomb which was being guarded by Roman soldiers. But just three days later, and no one knows where the body has gone. The Pharisees and Roman guards are in a frenzy because rumours are swirling around Jerusalem about what could have happened to the body. Could it have been stolen? Perhaps Jesus wasn't really dead and he crept out in the dead of night. Maybe the Romans have hidden the body. Who knows? This is our greatest mystery yet. Cadets, for the final time, get out your code breakers and let's crack this first clue. Cadets, you have done it. You've made it to the 12th and the final challenge of your training. Complete this mission and you will be able to qualify as a fully fledged secret agent at Mission Academy. Now for this final bit of training, we would like you to become an expert in forensics. That means, that means you're gonna be using scientific and technological techniques to find out the facts about a case. Now specifically, we're going to be learning about how to analyze some fingerprints. Now, did you know that every single person's fingerprint is totally unique? That's because God has made every single person on earth completely different, completely special, and so there are no two fingerprints that are ever exactly the same. And that's why it's so useful for investigators to lift fingerprints because they can discover exactly who was in a place at a particular time. It's so useful for investigating. But also did you know that there are eight main types of fingerprints that humans have? So even though they're all different, 
there's eight main types. So what we're going to do is a little activity. And for this activity, you're going to need some ink. So I've got my ink pad here. If you don't have an ink pad, then you need to find another way of getting the end of your finger a bit coloured. So maybe a felt tip or something like that would be a good second best. And the other thing you're going to need is a balloon. Now, it helps if you've got quite a light coloured balloon, like my yellow one here, but you can use pretty much anything you like. And we're going to use this simple technique to make our own fingerprints and the fingerprints of your family a little bit bigger so that we can analyse them. So first of all, I'm going to take my ink pad. I'm going to use my uh, index finger here and we'll use this as an example. So I'm going to just push that around. Make sure you've got lots of ink on every corner of it. You want to get lots on there. Make sure that it's all covered. When it's done like that, what we'll do is I'm going to take that and very carefully, I'm going to press it down on, a, I'll use a hard surface. I'm going to press it down and then lift it off so I get a nice fingerprint on the balloon. Just going to wiggle it around a little bit there. Okay, there we go. Now you can see I've got my fingerprint on there. Now that's still slightly hard for me to see and I won't be, be able to compare it very well to, to the eight types. But if I start to blow the balloon up, then you'll see that my fingerprint there starts to grow. Now you'll need to, you can let a little bit of air out as well till you get the optimum size. There we go. I've got mine about the size of a, quite a big potato there. And I can see, I can probably see it better than you, but I can see quite clearly all the different patterns and the swirls and the lines that are going on on that fingerprint. Now check this out. You can compare this now to our charts uh, of the eight most common fingerprint types. So have a look, see if you can work out what type of fingerprint that you've got. And then you can try any brothers and sisters you've got, mums, dads, grannies, uncles, whoever lives with you, and see if you can work out what kind of fingerprints you've got. So I think I've got one of these number seven uh, central pocket loop walls going on here. Uh, I bet you didn't know I had a central pocket loop wall. There you go. Uh, so have a little go at this activity. You can always uh, try different sides of the balloon if you've only got one. Have a little compare of your fingerprints. I'll leave this, um, this diagram, this scientific diagram up on the screen so you can have a go at comparing your different fingerprints and see if you can work out what category every single fit person's fingerprint is. When you've done that, then you can have a look at all the descriptors and you can become an expert on fingerprint lifting. Have a go now. Right then, cadets, this is our most important and our biggest mystery to date. But amazingly, my agents have managed to track down somebody who lives just round the corner who might be able to tell us something. Uh, so thank you so much uh, to you, Joanna, for coming in and being our expert witness. No problem. Uh, now, first of all, Joanna, um, let me just tell you what I think we already know, the facts that we've got, and then... Maybe you can fill me in on any like rumours you've heard or anything. Um, so first of all, we know we know Jesus was crucified. I mean, hundreds of people saw that. That's been recorded. Uh, we know we know he was definitely dead um, because the Romans checked and the blood and the water flowed out of his side. And and we know the the exact tomb that he was buried in as well because it's quite it's quite a famous one actually. The, you know Joseph's one, and uh, we know where it was, and we know it was guarded by Roman soldiers because. Pontius Pilate had all that set up, but that's all on record. Um, but then we also know that the, the, the tomb isn't there now, like, people, like well, the, the, the rock in front of it isn't there now, and the body's missing, and the Roman soldiers have disappeared. And so, yeah, we, we know that you live nearby. So I just wondered, like, 
have you heard anything? You know, have you heard any whispers, any gossip? Have you got any friends who know someone who knows something? Or I don't know, well, can you tell us anything about I this? Do, wow, I can do better than that. I can tell you exactly what happened to it. Wait, what? How? How? Well, I was one of the people that saw where he was buried. I was there when he was crucified. No, that's amazing. That, wow, that's that's incredible. But but what I want to get to is like, what about now? Like, how do you know what happened to the body? Like, hang on, have you, have you got the body? Did you take it? No, no, no. So yesterday morning, uh, me and some friends, we were on our way to the tomb super early, like at sunrise. And we had some spices with us, you know, for burial. And we were chatting on the way. We, we really didn't know how we were going to get into the tomb because it was it was covered by this stain. And so we thought maybe we could have a word with the Roman soldiers who were guarding it, you know, to see if they could help us. But when we got there, we found that the soldiers were, were all gone. And you know what? The tomb was empty. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even I know that. But, 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 but where's the body now? Like, yeah. well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. There is no body. Jesus, Jesus, he's alive again. What? Like... You you mean you've actually seen him alive? Well, Mary did first, and then and then a few more of us and Peter. Uh, but he just seems to be popping up everywhere, just meeting with lots of different ones of us. Wow, that's incredible! It is. It's so wonderful. But you know, God created the whole world through Jesus. Like Jesus, is the one who gives life to every living thing. So I guess you know we shouldn't be that surprised that. He came back to life again, really. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. And hang on, hang on. Didn't he say something about this? Like a few weeks ago, I'm sure he said something about you know, rise again after three days. But did I just make that up? Well, that, that was a thing, wasn't it? No, he did exactly. And he did, and he said it a lot actually, many, many times. And and to be honest, I didn't really understand at the time, but now. It makes perfect sense. I can't believe it. Wow, like this is the best news ever. Joanna, thank you so much for, for coming and telling us. Like, I think we need to celebrate this. Wow, thank you. So exciting. Now we're going to sing a song that celebrates Jesus coming back from the dead. It's called Happy Day. Now it says this in Romans chapter 4, verse 25. He says, Jesus was given over to die for our sins, and he was raised from death to make us right with God. You see, Jesus coming back to life is really, really important. It's not just a nice, happy ending to the story. Actually, the resurrection bit is the bit that makes us friends with God again. It's that final proof that Jesus' death on the cross really worked, and we really are forgiven. And because he rose again, we know that actually we can rise again one day too and be with God forever. So let's jump up off our sofas, get your hands in the air, you can dance, you can sing, let's make some noise and celebrate that Jesus is alive. The greatest day, the greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. And oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, realize meeting face to face, I'm yours, Jesus, you are mine. And this joy, perfect peace, 
Earthly pain finally will see Celebrate Jesus is alive He's alive And oh, happy day, happy day You wash my sin away Oh, happy day, happy day I'll never be the same Forever I am changed And oh, what a glorious Oh, what a glorious day What a glorious way That you have saved me what a glorious day, what a glorious name, yeah, yeah, and oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed. Hi agents, hope you're all doing well. Um, you might notice I'm looking a little bit different. I've got no beard, but don't worry. It's all part of my disguises uh, course that I've been going on for the last few weeks. I'm gonna be uh, praying with you guys and chatting through the little bits of Bible that we're gonna be reading this week as well. Um, so I thought I'd jump right into the prayer. Yeah, thank you, Father, that uh, you rose again from the dead and that you have uh, won the victory of, <laughs> of death and that we can, uh, live forever when we believe in you lord and i thank you that you are so powerful that even when you died you didn't die forever that you came back and rose again for to uh yeah live with us and live forever lord i thank you for your almighty power and strength in that lord and i thank you that we are able to um live forever with you in heaven as well lord and that uh, we can only do it through your grace lord yeah thank you for your holy spirit that's with us every day as well lord and i thank you for your almighty grace amen Hi agents, this is me again. So I'm going to be chatting through the bits of Bible that you're going to be reading this week. And we're right at the end now, so it's Luke 23 and 24. So in Luke 23, it talks about um, how Jesus was crucified and how it went through all of the trials with Pontius Pilate and people like that. And so it's really worth giving it a read. And um, and then Jesus dies. It's quite a, like a scary bit of passage because he dies and he's, he's dead. But then it's all right, because in chapter 24, which is possibly the most important chapter that you're going to be reading, he rises again. And it's incredible. And we get to hear all about it. So we hear about the ladies who um, go and put uh, spices and wrap Jesus' body and he's not there. And it, we tell, it tells us that two angels are there and they tell us that Jesus is risen, which is really cool. Um, but like no one is quite understands yet. And Jesus then goes and walks with some of the other disciples who are walking to a town called Emmaus and they don't recognise him. And it seems a little bit confusing because they're like, surely you'd recognise Jesus. But he was dead. You have to remember he was dead and they thought he was. And so they had no idea. Um, and so he kind of chats through with them and talks about uh, some of the things that the prophets had said about Jesus. And uh, they kind of chat through and they're like, we don't quite understand. And then Jesus comes and rests in the town with them and he gives them some bread. And then they realise and they're like, oh, my goodness, Jesus has been walking with us this whole time. He's risen. It's incredible. Um, and so it's possibly the most important bit of Bible reading that you guys are going to do. And so it's really worth getting into that and uh, really yeah, having a look at that. Um, and it's just, yeah, such incredible truths about how Jesus is risen and he fulfilled all of these things that the prophets were going to have said. And um, it's just, yeah, it's incredible. Really, really good bit of reading um, this week. I hope you guys are all doing all right. Cadets, it's really amazing that some of you have been sending in your poems and your prayers from last week, uh, all about Jesus and all about what he did for us on the cross. So I thought I would share some of those prayers and some of those poems, and maybe it might inspire you in your praying today later on. Uh, so we've got one from John T. Now, John T's done a really cool uh, acrostic um, where he's got Jesus down the side, and then he's got a line starting with each letter. So he's put, Jesus loves me, 
every Christian is thankful for Jesus, songs of Jesus, understand more about Jesus by going to church, good tip there, and super Jesus died on the cross for us. That is so creative. Well done, John T. Really love that one. Now, we've got um, a really beautifully, uh, really beautifully decorated one that, uh, that Emmy has sent. She said, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me on the cross. So really lovely. Well done there. Um, Jacob has got this one. Um, and, and you know what? This is this is one of the most important prayers that you'll ever pray. It's really simple. It's really thankful. But it's life changing. He says, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Amen. Do you know what? That's that's one of the most important things you'll ever pray because you realize what Jesus did for you. And it's so important. And then now Caleb has done something really interesting because he shared with us um, a poem he's done at school all about people who sacrificed their lives really in World War II. And then he's added a prayer to it. Hopefully you can see his um, his World War II poem there. And he's added a prayer to it. And it's a thankful prayer. He said, thank you, Jesus, that we don't live in a country like this anymore. And you know what? When we think about people uh, giving, our giving their lives to fight for our freedom, actually, it reminds us a bit of Jesus on the cross, doesn't it? Because he gave his life. He laid it down so that we could be free. We could be free from uh, all, the, all the bad things that we've ever done and that we can live with him forever uh, in heaven, actually, in a world where all of these things aren't going to be here anymore either. So I think that's really profound. Thank you so much, Caleb. And thank you, you guys for sharing those prayers. And do you know what? You can pray like that today. You can say thank you to God. You can say thank you uh, for, for Jesus coming and doing everything he did at Easter time. Now we're gonna pick one more prize winner uh, for the term. This is our last, um, our last City Kids prize this term. Don't worry, we will be back next term uh, with our brand new theme, which you'll hear about on Easter Sunday. Make sure you're watching next week for our family service at 10 o'clock. It's going to be loads and loads of fun. But we are going to pick a winner. So I've got my Mission Academy bowl here, pink this week. And our prize winner is Caleb. So well done, Caleb. Uh, we'll get in touch with your parents and we'll sort you out with the prize. Well, well done, cadets. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. We are incredibly proud of you because you have completed all 12 weeks of Mission Academy training. We can now certify you officially as secret agents of Mission Academy. And we're going to release you out into the field to go on your own top secret missions. I really hope that you've enjoyed reading through Luke's gospel with us too. We kind of want to know what you thought about it. What do you think about this Jesus? Do you want to follow him? Do you believe in him? Will you give your life to him and let him be your Lord? Will you ask him to come into your life and forgive all your sins? I've done that and I really want to encourage you to do that as well as you reflect on what you've read. Do you know what? These are the most important questions in the whole world. You, you could be investigating forever and you'll never come across anything more important than what do you believe about Jesus? Are you going to follow him? I want to pray for us right now as we graduate and as we finish the journey. Father God, we thank you for helping us to discover so much about Jesus in these last 12 weeks. Help us, Lord Jesus, to follow you. Help us to believe in you. Help us to live for you. And we pray right now, Lord, come into our hearts. Be our King, be our Lord, and wash away every sin we've ever done so that we can live with you forever. Thank you for all the fun that we've had over the last few weeks. And we ask that you bless us over this Easter. Amen. Well, that is the end for Mission Academy. But City Kids is going to be back in a couple of weeks after we've had an Easter break. But don't forget to tune in next Sunday morning because we have got our Easter Sunday all-age family service, which is going to be amazing fun. You don't want to miss that one. So we'll see you there. Bye-bye.